Hey guys, Dr. Josh Axe here with Dr. Lee Aaron Keneally, and today we're going to be talking about how bad habits can increase your risk of cancer. And I'll tell you, there are probably some surprising bad habits, Doc, we're going to talk about today that people don't realize are increasing their susceptibility of cancer. And Dr. Keneally is one of the leading authorities in fighting cancer naturally. In fact, she has a new book we'll talk about at the end on how to fight cancer naturally here as well. But we're going to dive in and answer your most common questions. And hey, help, help us spread this message of how to fight cancer naturally. Take a minute right now, punch that share button, click that like button, and we're going to dive right in. So number one here, how often are we exposed to environmental toxins and how does this impact our health and our susceptibility to cancer? Well, toxins are ubiquitous in every single thing we do. Even if you were to live on the North Pole, like the polar bears, they've actually examined the fat in polar bears, polar bears and found uh, heavy metals. Wow. So it doesn't matter where you live or what you do, you are constantly bombarded with toxins. And so everything from Everything you eat, drink, or breathe probably has some level of mm. toxicity in it. And so we have got to be aware of this because we're seeing a pandemic of illnesses. And so a pandemic means a worldwide uh, situation of illnesses in all age groups now. And so cancer happens to be the largest killer of everyone one to 85 years of mm. age. And so how can this impact our health? Well, in every single way. Our cell bathes, and we have trillions of cells, and our cell bathes in this beautiful fluid of water. And it has something called the Krebs cycle of energy. It was named after Dr. Krebs, and Dr. Krebs invented this beautiful biochemical cycle. And, and, and I show patients a diagram of how vitamins and nutrients make this cycle work to make energy for you and take care of you. And then you have chemical X and chemical Y and chemical A, et cetera. All the chemicals, and all of us have hundreds of chemicals, and some of the worst that interfere are heavy metals. Mercury, lead, arsenic, aluminum, uranium. These are terrible in how they infect the crucial biological cellular functioning of our health. So we, it's not, we can't look the other way. We've got to take a stand, and that's what we're all here today, taking a stand and educating you on what you can do and be, have an awareness of your surroundings. One of the biggest toxins that we have today is electrosmog, the invisible energy web that all of us are plagued with. Mm. And if we drew a picture, it would look like a spider web of all the different energy that's impacting our health. Now, yes, okay, we're not gonna get rid of our cell phone, probably not gonna get rid of our iPad, we're not probably not gonna get rid of our computer, but there are things that you can do personally to affect how these toxins affect your health. Mm, absolutely, so as Dr. Keneally is talking about, I mean, toxins are everywhere. They're everywhere from us, she's talking about from cell phones to computers to the food we eat, such as pesticides, the meat we eat, a lot of the antibiotics and steroids in there, plus a lot of other places, we're exposed to these different environmental toxins. So it's, it's easy to see why cancer rates are on the rise more than ever before, uh, or there's so much you know, cancer and so many other, just autoimmune diseases and things that are impacting the body in a negative way. Another question here, can bacteria and viruses cause cancer? If so, how? Well, that's a great question because if we have a chronic infection, whether it's bacteria, fungus, parasites, or viruses, it predisposes us to cancer because mm. why? Because it causes inflammation. Mm. So let's say you have a tooth infection. Well, every one of your teeth correspond to an organ in your body and the chronic inflammation will cause distress in the mm. body. Viruses, HPV, we know increases your risk of cancer. We know that over 35% of head and neck cancers now are HPV, a human papillomavirus. Herpes, herpes one, one, whether it's one or two, can increase your risk of cancer. So all viruses, yes, because they wear down the immune system, they suppress the immune system and cause inflammation. Parasites, things that we think in America, 
oh, how could we have parasites? We have this pure, clean environment. No, that's not true because parasites are in the water, they're in the food. We have stressed out gastrointestinal systems, so we have an open playground for parasites to invade our body. And then we have yeast. Well, if you took antibiotics one time, one time, one day, you have killed all of your natural microbiome. Mm. That's the, the bacteria that live. We have more organisms that work for us than we do have cells. And so when we take antibiotics, we eat sugar, we're exposed to EMFs, we are, um, you know, e eat foods that, you know, basically act as a drain uh, to our body, then we have fungus, mm. fungus among us. And I tell people, it's not just the bugs, it's all the toxins that these produce. Mycotoxins, for example, for fungus. But all of these organisms produce their own degree of toxicity. So all this do does is suppress the immune system, create inflammation, and create more toxicity in the body. Yeah, good stuff. Well, again, bacteria, viruses, yes, they can make you more susceptible. Let's talk about number three here. What are the worst eating habits that may be promoting cancer? And I'd love to hear if you have a few surprising ones uh, as well. Well, first of all, any kind of packaged food. Okay, first of all, I always look at like if I go somewhere and, and how they're going to put, what they're going to put my food in, okay? Like, okay, styrofoam, for example, it's stored in there. So you, you, you can't even almost eat out unless you ask the people like, okay, how are you storing the food once if I'm going to pick it up or if I'm going to take it home? But probably the worst, and I tell people, if there's one thing you change today, it's what's your intake of sugar, okay? We already know that the receptor sites for sugar are way more for a cancer cell than they are for a normal cell. Now, we're talking about cancer, but we can talk about any other illness. We can talk about neurodegenerative diseases. Mm -hmm. We can call, talk about, you know, any illness pre weakens okay sugar weakens the body but there's so much sugar you think okay cookies candies pies and cakes those are the obvious sugars but what are the non-obvious sugar bread rice pasta potatoes crackers popcorn all of these things basically turn into sugar and we know that if we want to control the energy cycle of our body that cutting out sugar and the unfavorable carbohydrates are critical to the survival. And if you want to have energy, everybody's buying energy drinks and doing all these things for energy, but you are going to feel your energy just by creating the right biochemical reactions in your body with the food that you're eating. Now, also fast foods. Okay, if they sell something for a dollar, how can it possibly have something good for you? How can it, po it it's not going to. Yeah. So I know there are emergency situations, but now today, and living in 2017, we have available so many quick, easy foods. Yeah. Just like for myself, I will grab uh, nutso, nutso, which is nuts and seeds, and I will grab two tablespoons of that, and I have energy because fat is fuel. Fat is energy. And you that's something you can do really, really fast. Now they sell those butters in little packets. So, and now you can go and get salads, you can get vegetables, you can get a juice ready to go anywhere now today. It's amazing. You can also, like I tell people, if you can't afford juicing, there's amazing green powders that you can get already prepared. And say yeah, yeah. you don't have a lot of money, you go get those, those there, there's um, actually raw different gra grasses and, gr and things that taste good, believe it or not, oh, because yeah. when I travel, that's what I bring. And, um, then if you go to the store and you, you look at those, I'll never forget when I was, kids were young in elementary school and people bought Lunchables. Oh yeah. Okay, it's processed. It's got more chemicals. Do you know now that one of the fastest growing cancers today is colon cancer in 25 to 35 year olds? Wow. So that means what? Their gastrointestinal tract is being laden with chemicals and toxins, right, and inflammatory organisms. And how can you be having can colon cancer at the age of 25? But what I believe now is our gastrointestinal tract, it's everything, okay? We've, we've, there's lots of been on that, but yeah. now and now with the, with the, uh, the microbiome discovery and mapping all that out, but then our foods, 
we are now, now you're going to be able to scan the nutritional value of your foods, just like that. So now people are going to be in the know. It's not going to be a question anymore. You're going to be able to scan anything you're buying and see what the nutritional value, just like that. Yeah. So now people, are, now the food industry is going to be accountable. But our food today, you need to know, like I shop at a farmer's market. So I know all the people who are giving me food. But even at your local health food stores, the, a lot of them, like mine does, it tells where who whoever it's coming from, whatever farm it's coming from. Now, you know, if you get really adventurous, you can grow your own foods, believe it or not, pretty easily, not that complicated. And it's good for your soul to, to grow a garden. And so, uh, like, people just think that downing a shake and eating a hamburger and french fries, think about how those french fries, the oil in that french fries. Mm. You think about where did those potatoes come from and then you've just denatured the vital ingredients of that food. Yeah. So so really, people need to start really being mindful of everything they're doing, whether it's their sleep, their water, but the food. What does food do? It provides the information, the energy that our body needs to work for you. You know, and so often what people are eating, it, it's not food at all, you know. And you think about when you're eating, ask yourself, is it an actual food? If it's in a package, typically it's not a food. If it has more than you know, just even one ingredient sometimes or multiple ingredients. And so again, really getting more food in your diet. You know, myself and uh, my wife Chelsea just recently took a trip. You know, and we, we always pack snacks with it. You talk about, I know you travel all the time. Similar thing, we bought some grass-fed uh, beef jerky. We brought some kale chips. We brought some goji berries. I mean, these are things, you know, a handful of, uh, uh, we, yes. we, we brought some sprouted salted almonds. You know, and, and that's what we take when we travel. And I get questions all the time from people saying, well, how do you do it? How do you eat healthy, especially while traveling? Well, you plan ahead. You know, you go to a local health food store or a chain like Whole Foods and you get some healthy snacks when you go. And similar thing, before I'm traveling anywhere, I know I will search for the, I'll look up organic healthy restaurant in Dallas, Texas, or, you know, wherever I'm going or traveling, look that up. But it's really important that you plan ahead, especially while traveling, uh, so you can follow this diet as well. But most importantly, hey, while you're at home, you know, getting more real food in your diet. And, and pick up some healthy cookbooks, you know, another thing that can help there as well. Number four here, Dr. Keneally, we're all aware of how smoking increases the chance of developing lung cancer, but what are some other bad habits that increase an in, in individual's chance of developing cancer in their lifetime? Well, first of all, smoking is really bad. <laughs> and I tell people, I have patients of mine that they do smoke, okay? There's a, there's a few, actually. There's not tons of people. It's mostly young people now. But there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of chemicals in smoking. So please be a cheerleader for helping someone quit smoking. Uh, it's probably one of the worst addictions we can have is smoking. Uh, but sitting... Mm. Sitting's the new smoking. Okay, what does everybody do today? They sit, and you have 800 muscles in your body to move. So you need to move your body. You've got to activate that lymphatic system. You've got to increase your endorphins. You've got to burn calories. So I tell people what they need to do is if they sit, a lot of people sit at computers today. Mm -hmm. So I tell people if you sit at computers today, every hour on the hour, that means 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock. Go and walk five minutes. Mm. Clear your head. First of all, you're going to be a way more productive person yeah. if you go move around and preferably outside. We're in, we're in the, the office setting, again, with electrosmog. Some, so if you're not mindful, like in our office, we were mindful about the chemicals and things that we used. Yeah. It and the, floor, the kind of floors and everything outgasses chemicals like a brand new car. And so, so you go outside, connect with nature, sit on the grass, uh, any kind of things for five minutes. It's amazing what it will do. Um, th the other thing is like people don't realize that going to a gym is n probably not as good as for you as going outside and exercising. Sure. So I always tell people try to go outside and again connect with nature to. Um, to balance and, and get your soul re-energized. Mm. Because going and from, you have the EMFs from the machines and everything, you can use your own body to go outside and, and hike with nature. Now granted, sometimes yeah. the weather is Love not it. conducive to that, but it is actually uh, a very important way 
to, um, to not only get the exercise in, but also get our, our, the energy of our body more balanced. Yeah, great advice. Again, one of the worst habits is sitting all the time and too much, and especially in the spring, in the summer, in the fall, when you're able to get outside in your area, make sure you do it. Block them some time, put it in your schedule, and there's a lot of benefits here. There's the benefit of exercise, there's the benefit of sunbathing, getting some of that vitamin D, and some benefits of grounding. You know, kick your shoes off, go barefoot, walk in, you know, on the dirt, on the grass, on the sand. But you can really transform your health that way. And I love this advice here, Dr. Keneally. It's great. And hey, I want to let you know about Dr. Keneally's book. It's called The Cancer Revolution. And it's this is a groundbreaking program that goes through how to naturally reverse or prevent cancer, as you can see in the subtitle of her book here. So Dr. Lee Aaron Keneally here, MD, and you can check it out here on her website, KeneallyMD.com. You can also find her book on Amazon. So just go on to Amazon right now and search The Cancer Revolution, um, and you can find her book there. But again, great advice, great tips from nutrition, natural treatments, and natural prevention tips as well. Dr. Keneally, thanks so much for being part of the program. And thank you for watching and for sharing this information because there are millions of people battling cancer, being diagnosed with cancer, and they need to know the truth of the integrative and natural approaches as Dr. Keneally teaches. Thanks for watching, guys.